I've been ready. All right. Like ever since I, I joined the Skype. <laughs> I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and with me today is a, a very special guest, Otto Ikonen, also known as Naulerheim on the Board Game Arena, the reigning champion on th of Finland, um, silver medalist of the Mind Sports Olympiad, and currently the highest rated ever player on Board Game Arena in Carcassonne in classical Carcassonne. Uh, hi, Otto. Well, 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 is it, isn't it the debut of the story for myself uh, on, on your channel, actually. And I'm actually super happy to be here because uh, we have been like planning on, uh, on this uh, co-hosting co stuff for um, actually on like, in, in like like several occasions and now it's finally happened yay yes so and the thing that we're co-hosting today is a friendly match between team hong kong and team belgium in preparation for the world team carcassonne online championships the uh the world cup preseason is underway the games have probably already started because uh, i see crafter after saying in the chat is alexi struggling with the carcassonne background drape yes among uh, other things uh, hi carcassonne hong kong hi 71 knives hi vika hi wong agatha hi daniel ktc hi glovier already uh, let us just jump into the games. Um, you can see all the lineups here. You can also see, by the way, on the screen, some other friendly matches that are going to be happening soon. There's going to be another stream right after that. More on that later. But to jump into the action, Hong Kong in, in, uh, between in, in Belgium. Uh, so I'll let my special guest decide which of these duels do you think will be most interesting to watch? Oh. Well, well interestingly enough... Um... The, uh, like many of the Hong players are actually not so known to me. I'm not sure if they have um, been in like competitive like for long. But um, you know, if if you ask me, be the most interesting then then I say that I kind of get I go with um, um, with with the no no mobility factors, uh, which will be would be uh, Sunny and and Fabian. Right, perfect. So, oh, so Sunny also, by the way, very strong, a, a very strong uh, Azul player as well. Uh, and uh, Fabian, the newcomer on the Belgian team, had a strong performance in their recent friendly match. So we're gonna go with them. And then after that, I would really be curious to look at CT, 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 CT versus Gina, Gina as well. Again, because of the no ability factor. So we are going with Fabian M B. Yeah, uh, and they have already started. I can see that I am being roasted by my viewers yet again. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course, I forgot to change the score from a previous stream. Now it's 0-0 zero, zero again. I'm, I'm not covertly rooting for Hong Kong. I'm trying to be impartial here. Speaking of which, who's rooting for Belgium? Who's rooting to for, for, to, for Hong Kong? I want to know, do... Uh, let us know in the chat. Yes, Vika, that's right. We will need to compare the end result to the initial result. So will it end 3-2 in Hong Kong's favor? We don't know that. So I'm about to open the game. Things are going really, really slow for some reason. But Board Game Arena is sometimes like that. Just bear with us. Uh, they are about like 20 tiles strong at the moment, so... I know that Sunny is not the quickest player and neither is uh, Fabian, so that is good for us, which gives us a good pace to commentate. Although, for real though, this is kind of, kind of, kind of weird. Huh. Let me try and do something a little bit here. And this over over here, already. Nope. I think I need to try again. What what is that? What is that? Okay. Then to uh, to open the. Hmm. 
Right, we seem to be finally, we seem to be finally in it. I think it should be okay now. I think it should be okay now. Uh, so, we're in the middle of the game. I think we're done with disruptions. We also have auto back as well. Do we? Yep, uh, should be. At least my picture seems to be moving again. Alrighty. So, uh... The players have already made a lot of moves, and we can see that Fabian here has 6 points on the scoreboard, Sunny has 26 points on the scoreboard, so uh, these, and also the Hong Kong player has 3 more meeples, but uh, Otto, how do you assess this position overall? Does the play with the yellow meeples have something going for them to compensate the 20 point difference? Uh, well, of course, um, apart from the, from the castle, I think you, the one thing that is kind of going on um, for them is that is the fact that they have this um, eight point uh, like loop road uh, that is in danger of being uh, like completely overrun by the, by yellow. But um, interestingly enough, um, I'm not sure if blue actually wants to block it because blue is now controlling the field on on the on the south side. And if that road, um, if that, like, well, at the moment, a shared road becomes um, limited to a crossroads, then uh, Blue's field is also going to be limited, like, quite heavily to only six points. And uh, since, since Yellow has a, a six-point monastery already, it would kind of, like, uh, uh, compensate for the south, um, for the south, uh, for the southern field. Uh, so I think that would actually be, um, in, in in a very weird way, a winning position for for uh, yellow here. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, because uh, as yellow had completed this uh, this the city at the top, the only well, okay, Sunny has you now completed another one. Sunny is ten ten points ahead, but yellow is indeed ahead on the fields oh and yellow drop yet another farmer so a yellow maintaining tide on the field and look at this it's actually just almost like a blowout for yellow because this was an excellent move by fabian because look at this there are four regular monasteries st still in play so they go over here and they will give fab and, and when the monastery comes in it will give fabian at least seven points but really when a curve comes here and when a curve come here it will give fabian nine points and then not only that, this move indirectly protects uh, this road, which will belong to Yellow, because like Yellow has uh, obviously is waiting for a curve to finish this eight-point road. And now for Sunny, it's actually imp really impossible to uh, block this connection. The only uh, type of tiles that would um, manage to successfully separate these two roads would be like a road monastery that goes over here but both road monasteries have gone out right there in the middle so things are now looking really really good for yellow unless what if sunny draws one of the two remaining t-shaped crossroads that goes like this then sunny would be able to go here separate all the fields, separate the two roads, making sure that uh, yellow completes only a five-point road and not an eight-point road, and most importantly, block this square. Make sure that the monastery cannot be used here and that no tile can be used there, and so that this guy over here in the center stays trapped uh, for eight points. But the thing is that you know um, it, it's it's a it's a it's a monastery we are talking about. So if you have a blocked monastery, it's not really such a bad thing because again, in in um, 
uh, in this case also, if it gets blocked, it's going to be eight points, which is kind of a lot of points for, um, at the end of the game for one meeple. And uh, if Sunny actually places the crossroad there, which I think he still should uh, do, uh, then he's going to give two meeples back to Fabian and only one for himself. And that basically would also solve the issues for Fabian uh, regarding his meeple, dis uh, his meeple disadvantage. And since he now has also a, a city at the south, uh, able to be completed with two city caps. Oh, I, I don't think uh, he should have done it on, on that side uh, if he plans to complete it because of this. But, um, yeah. you know, I, I think he definitely had uh, had a, a large threat of completing that city, getting, uh, what, 10 points and getting Amiibo back and being in, in a very nice position in this game. But, uh, you know, as a result of his, um, I, I'd say, rather tragic uh, decision, um, he might have made a, a very big misstep. Okay, but speaking of missteps, as we were talking, of course, the players were kind of exchanging quick points, just making natural moves, with the exception of, of this move, which I think you rightly criticized, which this tile, of course, should have gone over here. And now we see that Sunny has been able to almost uh, successfully join Fabian City. Of course, there's still one splitter still in play, which goes over here, but uh, the chances of um, that splitter being drawn before Sunny draws a triangle to unify these two cities, of course, the chances of that happening are pretty low. But now we have a very, very interesting tile also surrounding surround this critical squares, and Fabian chooses not to use that tile. Fabian uses to try and spend his last meeple to re-attack and that's a decision I'm very, very critical about because Fabian spent his last meeple and now he was not able to meeple this juicy, juicy monastery. Of course, he used it as a field tile. He now managed to unify these fields. He managed to uh, add one more point to his monastery and to pre-complete his roads over here. He um, basically... Um, almost guaranteed that he's going to get these eight points eventually but now the meeple trouble for fabian as a result of the move over here and we can see that uh sunny drew an eight point monastery and put it into another spot which now really looks uh good for the hong kong player but immediately fabian draws the curve and now completes uh all the plan that came from this brilliant move earlier on has the eight point road has the nine point monastery has the unified field where he at least for now has the advantage because this farmer uh, in the blue on the top left has not joined the farm just yet well let's see if uh, Sunny has anything to do about that but the tragic part of course for yellow is that he was not able to meeple this monastery and these are basically just nine points thrown um, down the drain so a very um, unpleasant run out for yellow well of course it's not a bad run out but he could have gotten a bit more out of his earlier um, brilliant move in the position and now as Sunny starts a new city below with a very very clear intention of drawing a tube shape extender and a triangle and maybe taking the city over if he so chooses uh fabian at least now is able to start a field fight and drops an excellent farmer in my opinion he drops a farmer up top of course either trying to connect over here through blue's monastery and so if blue chooses to take a curve then blue will probably want to finish the monastery meeple the road and then it 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 is blue who will basically help yellow to enter the field we can see in the meantime how blue takes quick points at the bottom of course blue still wants to keep this threat of eating up this big city open but we can see the second part of Fabian's plan, which is rather brilliant. If Sunny chooses not to connect himself through the monastery, right? If, if Sunny just chooses not to put a tile over here, this yellow meeple has another route into the field through the right. And this is exactly what Fabian is doing. Fabian is hoping to um, draw like a crossroads maybe. There's still three crossroads remaining that go over here, score a couple of points and gain the majority on the field. So. In that sense, the situation is looking very good for yellow. Which brings us to the question, as blue here, yeah, I was going to ask, uh, so blue just decides to simply finish his monastery and get it over with. But uh, if you ask me, I think blue had a stronger move. 
Well, well, what do you think here, Otto? Like with that curve, did Blue have had any better options? I certainly think he does. I mean, um, like although he he didn't have like that many options, uh, I think there were uh, I, uh, like actually multiple different um, um, uses for that title, um, which are all related to the field. Um, he could go like. For, um, just instead of completing his monastery, he could go uh, one tile higher and one tile to the left and drop a, a farmer of his own. Or he could go um, at the bottom where there is this uh, 12 point city and there is actually a direct uh, path to the field via a straight road. Or if he doesn't get a straight road, there is also a two tile connection like just um, um, just above him. Yeah, so I have to agree with you here. And out of these, out of these options, I probably prefer the first one, where like Blue could have dropped a farmer over here. Because in addition to finishing his monastery, and in addition to to letting a yellow into the field, Blue actually eliminated this field connection platform for himself. And now Blue will need to really look for a subpar way of entering the field. Well, does he go over here maybe and drop a farmer like this, trying to connect through a curve? I certainly see this as the, ooh, 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 uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there's one straight line remaining. I guess if he's really feels adventurous, he could go over here and try to sneak into the field through the bottom, through the straight line. Or, well, if he's feeling exceptionally adventurous, he could go over here and drop a farmer and hope to connect through a straight line or through a starting tile over here. Uh, and then, of course, he would have the risk of getting blocked with a crossroads, but he chooses neither of these options and instead goes for a blocking move. It does seem to me, however, that Sunny, even though Sunny has 13 points advantage, the field is worth uh, 15 points and uh, will possibly be worth a little bit more. It does seem that eventually Sunny will need to attack this field, but maybe he chooses to go for a fieldless approach and uh, spare his meeples. Maybe, for example, uh, start a counter field on the left, either with this tile or a different tile. Or perhaps Blue wants to go over here and... Uh, and finish this uh, the joint city and drop a farmer. Many many options here with the city cap. Uh, what would you do, Otto, for Sunny? Uh, well, actually, I would instantly just go to take the six point field because the the thing is that Sunny is now thirteen points ahead. Uh, he doesn't actually. I, I don't think he he even needs to even even tie the fifteen point field. I, I don't think he needs to do that. Um, whereas Fabian. I think he kind of will have to use a road tile eventually to take away the three points that uh, that Sunny has on his like little um, like private field in in the north, which isn't connected to the 50 point field yet. And because Sunny is ahead in meeples, uh, I think he has uh, like plenty of opportunities, and he doesn't really need to stress about um, about Fabian. Um, eventually winning the 15 point field or um, even completing the six point uh, city at the bottom like but the thing that Sunny now did is he's trying to complete his his 12 point city um, but I don't think that's important because he like I said before he could have taken a six point field with the city cap poten and potentially make it a nine point field which would already compensate quite nicely of the northern field Yes, well, at least the Sunny is listening to you uh, because on his next move, he decided to drop the farmer after all. And uh, Fabian surprises me here again. Again, so this is this looks like an excellent tile, the dagger tile. This would have been great for taking over the city and then uh, waiting for a Dorito to put at the bottom. But the thing is that all the five Doritos, all the five... Um, uh, tiles, uh, the triangle tiles that could have gone over here, they are already on the board, so none of these tiles exist in the deck. So as in, as enticing as this option looks, uh, it was no longer possible, which the Belgian duly recognized and started a new city in his field. But I think this move is way, way, way too conservative. <laughs> Much stronger, if you ask me, would have been simply taking four points from this loop road and then just leaving the city cap empty. Um, in one's own field. So basically Fabian would have had 
Oh, um, I would have dropped the farmer actually there as yellow, but um, I'm not sure what you what you think about that, uh, Otto. And you see, as a result, because um, Fabian could have taken this four point road, but he didn't, so he lost four points. And then Sunny was able to take four points easy for the road himself. Now, of course, three points for Fabian from this road. We'll probably see four points from Sunny. Yeah, Sunny really has no intention of taking over this field, even though he could easily do that. Uh, moreover, actually, Sunny, because he ch she chose not to connect this meeple into the field, and he probably won't, he'll still have three points compensation for losing this field, 16 extra points on the scoreboard, and I think we are about to see a classic, classic fieldless win from the Hong Kong player against, we see something exceptional here from Fabian. Sunny drew yet another quick point tile, probably... Uh, gonna take two points over here, might consider meepling a road and hoping for a curve or taking two points further here uh, or something like this. But um, unless Fabian comes up with something exceptional, then uh, the play with the blue meeple should prevail. So Otto, what that something exceptional could be as yellow? Is there a plan? Uh, I gotta say that... Uh... <sighs> Well, the plans are in like like really tight at this point. <laughs> um, um, as a result of of um, Sunny's like, I, I don't want to say like like negligence, but like the the um, uh, what's what's the word? Uh, just just uh, the decision that he's not going to go for the field, and he, instead he's just going to uh, reserve. Um, all all the small points that he can, and then now all the small points that he has reserved, uh, being that uh, three point, um, being being that uh, three point field and the six point field that he took, uh, are now uh, kind of biting um, Fabian because he was not able to to like really do anything to prevent that from happening. He couldn't really uh, he couldn't really. Um, Connect Fabian's second meeple to the to the to the now 18 point field earlier because it would have been too risky, and he was also in a meeple disadvantage, so he couldn't prevent Sunny from taking the six point field. Uh, but uh, yeah, like uh, like you said um, also before, um, Fabian did not take four points off the loop road and leave an, an empty city cap on his on his field but instead took a took a more conservative took a more conservative approach which i think ended up costing him eight points i think sunny was the one who eventually took the road yes yeah, so he did take the road but it does not seem that would have made much difference i mean the field points are now being counted and of course the eight points 18 points are being added to fabian but look at this even that three point compensation is uh more than enough well actually just enough to put sunny over the edge so come group plus seven win and it did seem to me that maybe the belgian could have been uh, more aggressive in here, trying to minimize the score difference uh, difference on the scoreboard. But credit goes to the play with the Hong Kong meep uh, with the <laughs> blue meeples because many a player would have just simply engaged in a pointless field fight and then ended up losing the game. He recognized that the uh, score difference was just enough of a buffer that uh, would allow him to hold on to the win without fighting for the field. And that's why Hong Kong gets their first uh, point on the scoreboard, first little point on the scoreboard. Uh, we're going to see how this duel develops later. We're also getting news from Kraft Giraffe that, um, th that Moby Dick won against uh, Carraher. And we also, it seems, that we have a request to have a look at the game of... Um, Tom D. Smith, that's nice dicer, who's currently ahead 1-0 against Kingsley 7-5. The position is allegedly interesting, which I have no doubt that it is. 
so and the game is midway through and we're j jumping into Knight's Dicer versus Kingsley 75. Kingsley 75 I haven't played with this uh, player before. Uh, rates at 440 so solid strong player but look at this Tom Bishmet in excellent shape. It, are they currently the highest rated Belgian player with 654? This could be very well the case and they also are five points ahead on the scoreboard playing with the green meeples. The Hong Kong players playing with the red meeples 20 points seven points on the scoreboard at first glance it looks like it is a um, even position but what i like for nice dicer is this blue uh this sorry green farmer which i didn't notice at first because of course i'm not very good at noticing blue uh green meeples because they are the color of the field but if anybody is an expert in green meeples it is otto because of course otto's primary uh, meeple color is green as some of you know so you're probably better at noticing all the green meeples in this position and um, analyzing it as we can see Kingsley just completed a four point road uh, equalized on the scoreboard almost got a meeple back oh and now a shared city is being completed and nice dicer is taking a uh, three point road which will be easily turned into a five point road this city was also in green's field so this farmer is currently scoring nine points then what else nice dicer has a ruin at the top uh and kingsley has five meeples in hand this semi-vulnerable city piece and this city which is a little bit well developed it is uh two dorito tiles from being finished so given these features on the board uh who do you prefer in this position not to learn and um and why would you prefer to be the player with the green meeples if we just forget about the meeple color or would you prefer to be the player with the green with the red meeples here i would definitely prefer green here um i'm actually a bit surprised that green did not actually even drop a second farmer uh when he completed the large like uh, shared city since um although it would have left a five point road then it would have well, almost like guaranteed the connection to the field and um, and controlling the field with uh, with two meeples because now there is really only one connection spot at the moment um, which is from the right and since it is uh, since it comes with a field field tile um, connection it's really hard to block and if Kingsley decides to go for it then uh, I think uh, Nice Dicer will have some issues because there are, well, there is actually like, I th I, I want to say like maybe one opportunity, like one other opportunity to to try getting to the field, and it's like by completing a four point city and dropping a farmer on it like instantly, like just kind of throwing away those four points which you get from completing it which is never really a thing that you want to do but uh, um, well he did get the six point road or six point six point roads as because he did not drop the second uh, the second farmer and it kind of paid off quite nicely um, but yeah I would definitely as a, um, as, as a summary uh, um, definitely be in favor of Green's position here. I, I also, I do want to point out that Green did not meeple this uh, road, this this three-point road, which he uh, uh, which he like pre-made by completing his his uh, um, city. Because I think there is still one um, dagger remaining. No, so yes, there if is. Kingsley, yes, there is. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, that's a great point because I, I think it's, it's nice dicer. It, he has a comfortable 15 point lead and the lead on the farm. Of course, okay, now he gets this and now he probably should meeple this road. I mean, four meeples, do it, do it, do it. But the risk of not meepling this road was of course that Kingsley could just get a curve, protect his city and then get the dagger tile and then score uh, like um, seven points for this huge loop road whilst completing his city, which of course would have put red right back in the game and even though the belgian has now successfully blocked um this city there are of course no tile that fits into this square and this meeple will be trapped with one point i have to say that the player with uh, from hong kong has done a great job trying to 
come back into the game and even uh, delaying a future field attack. Look at this, seven point monastery, five point road, a city which is about to become an eight point city, and the city over here on the left, still which is now only one Dorito tile away from getting completed. Oh, and what a move here from Nice Dicer. So he decides that he just wants to put an ironclad uh, control on the field, just grasp it tightly, tightly with both hands and never ever let that uh, field go. But then this puts this this uh, puts uh, Kingsley into an interesting situation where he will need to decide whether to even whether to try and attack this field with two meeples somehow to equalize it or try to gain these points elsewhere. What do you think of the decision here uh, by Nice Dicer to forego the four points and just drop a second farmer? Well, I think uh, maybe some of the viewers also uh, saw the look on my face when he did that. I wasn't really expecting him to forego those four points. And since, you know, like Nice Dicer was in a meeple advantage and given the fact that Kingsley had a an eight point uh, city going at the south which would almost like um, by force create eventually more connection opportunities to the field I don't think uh, Nice Dicer should have, like should have foregone those those four points I think he would have had a, a splendid opportunity to uh, to attack the field for the second time like later and that was like in a case if Kingsley immediately invests first meeple to the field um, from the exact spot which Nice Dicer now has taken his uh, second meeple to. Well, 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 and uh, it does seem to me that as a result of this move, this enables Kingsley to possibly approach a fieldless win, because now after completing this medium-sized city, he is... Oh, no, 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 he, he's doing it wrong, no, 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 I know, I know, Otto, I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking, just, uh, just, just, just try to be more generous. I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Okay, uh, I will try to explain the look of Otto's face, and you tell me if I'm wrong or not. So Kingsley had as a, uh, had like a 13 point advantage on the scoreboard, plus this eight point monastery, w which more than compensates this 15 point field. And if only Kingsley just left this 15 point field alone, then he could have possibly won by just completing city at the bottom, dropping a farmer, simply scoring quick points every single move, like take a six point field over here, like a five point road over here, uh, maybe like five point road over here, all kinds of stuff like this. But it seems to me that Kingsley now trying to attack this field, maybe has an idea of like getting a city and then dropping a second farmer and then getting a monastery and equalizing the field or whatever. But it does seem that it could uh, put Red into a, a losing position. Is that why you made that face, Otto, or was there more to this? Uh, that pretty much sums up the, <laughs> the, the, the look on my face. Um, I don't like Kingsley's move one bit, um, because although, um, like, in a... in one of the wonderful scenarios, he gets uh, instantly a, a um, city tile, and he even like completes that um, um, small city just just next to his first uh, field meeple and drops 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 a second um, uh, meeple to the field. Then gets the final remaining regular monastery or a road monastery, just depending on what uh, what kind of city tile he plays the second meeple to. But then he will need a 50-50 um, uh, shot of luck to get that. Um, monastery in the first place, and if he doesn't, well, then he has most likely just, just wasted a lot of points, a lot of potential points uh, from valuable city caps, which he could have taken like six six points first, and then maybe another six point field um, in, in in the south, or just do something completely different. And and now, because he needs a monastery to connect. Um, his first meeple to the field, which I assume is his idea, then uh, it's gonna only like um, equalize the one the, the one meeple from Kingsley and one meeple, one meeple from from Nice Dicer, 
Whereas if he had not placed the, the, the field meeple and then placed the monastery to the same spot, connecting Neistarch's second meeple to the field, it would be a nine-point monastery, whereas now it's only going to be a six-point monastery or, or a seven-point monastery. But it just, it just comes with less value. But moreover, it ended up being not a monastery because uh, because Red used this as a um, as not even a a monastery talk. He instead, still get got married to the idea of trying to attack the field. And of course, strong response here. The response here from Nice Dicer, uh, just making sure that basically he has control of the field. Because if now uh, Kingsley goes over here, which he still should, it's still like an eight point move. And I think he still can actually win this. Like he can still actually win this if he just goes over here. Equalizes the field. I mean, takes eight points. It, it should not not equalize the field, but just unifies the field. He's gonna get um. No, no, no! Take the eight points. Take the eight points. I cannot believe what is happening. <laughs> well, actually, oh wait, actually. wait, 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 wait! It's not a bad idea, no. Oh. I'll, I'm not sure what tiles are actually remaining because I haven't been like counting that that exactly. But if this pays out, this is gonna be just a a massive giga brain move. Yeah, because there's still there's still a regular city cap, a vanilla city cap that, that can be used to connect it to the field. So it just Kingsley decides to use monastery tiles as farm tiles, and there's of course still this connection at the bottom. Okay, he doesn't get this, but what are the, what are the other tiles remaining? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I will see this mm, in uh, in a bit. Okay, will Kingsley now go over here, perhaps? Uh, just to take three points and to unify the two fields. Yes, he does. So what are the final remaining tiles? Will he get can get connected to the fields or not? I'm so on the edge of my seat. Okay, nice dicer. Okay. Now has a very difficult choice. He actually needs to calculate. So the winning move for nice dicer, I think, is to go over here. No, 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 no. No, no, but the, the final is... remaining tile is, is a is a curve. Is it, is no, it, no, it's it's a city cap. It's oh, a city cap. Oh, so no! he could have blocked. Oh no! Green could have blocked <laughs> no. the field connection, but instead Green got oh, Green into no. four points, and now Kingsley, as a result, is able to connect to the field <laughs> and equalize everything and actually win. So both brave, or both players just exchange uh, very, very interesting moves, shall we say? And as a result, it is the player from Hong Kong that just manages to pull off a massive, massive swindle. Okay, so first of all. Uh, basically, green with ironclad control of the field, which allowed Kingsley to actually get away with a win on the scoreboard. But Kingsley said, no, I don't want to win on the scoreboard. I want just to fight for this field, like a true German Carcassonne player, uh, even though they're from Hong Kong. And they used uh, a, a six-point value tile as a farming tile, a seven-point monastery as a farming tile, an eight-point monastery as a farming tile, just to fight for the field. And they are somehow... Still Still successful. Oh, this is just absolutely lovely. Uh, 12 points advantage for Kingsley. And, uh, well, this is great for us because uh, this equalizes um, this jewel. And these guys will now go into a decider. What a game. What a game. And what a nice recognition by Kingsley, though, that there was still this field connection available from the left. Um, took uh, so decided you know that I would need to tie the field and they made the decision and with tons tons of sacrifices they actually ended up tying the field wow <laughs> that's absolutely mental I mean just completely back and back and forth match with I think uh, a lot of questionable moves that ended up like somehow miraculously paying off <laughs> the, 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 the questionable moves are what we live for. That's where the content is auto, okay? So like if everybody just plays perfectly, it's not interesting. It you have to have a bit of some heart in the game, you know. It's it's only you I know, just, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, know, I mean I know. you play in a boring way. You just make the best move every single game. It's not interesting. But this this <laughs> Okay, by the way, uh, Vika was asking an interesting question. Maybe Red was going for a six-point field over here. And that's certainly an interesting idea, so like that Red could basically drop a farmer and then entice uh, Green to maybe drop another farmer over here. And then Red would just simply keep this three-point farm and then just try to score uh, like four points for the city cap and basically separate this six-point field from anywhere else. This would have been like a... 
200 IQ move, but I don't think that was Red was doing. No, Red wanted to fight for this field. Red wanted this field very, very hard. Glovir is saying blocking Red uh, Red's entry wasn't enough, wasn't it? So over here, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, I ha I think it. Oh, okay, maybe it wasn't enough. Yeah, this is true, but. It still was the highest scoring move. Uh, you don't want to just allow your opponent to grab, um, what, 15 points with one go. Well, anyway, we do have a lot of interesting games here. Um, we're getting suggestions that we haven't seen mods game just yet. So let's just see how Moby Dick is doing and then we'll go to the uh, decider of Kingsley and Nice Dicer. This is way, way too interesting to leave this completely alone. So Moby Dick is also playing a decider, I think, or is that a second game? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's their second game. So Moby, Moby, Moby. Oof. So the game started 16 minutes ago, so it must be the second game, not the decider. And it does seem at least this time, the Belgian MVP is, oh, outrated. So uh, uh, Team Hong Kong has a player who is nearly 600 ELO, and I don't think I've played much with them. So it is Carragher, or Carragher, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Mm who plays the green meeples and is eight points ahead on the scoreboard. But it does seem that Maud, the player with the red meeples, has a lot, a lot of compensation for these eight points. So Otto, how do you assess uh, the position of both sides? Um, well, in a quick look, I would say that I would definitely, first of all, uh, prefer Red's position, since uh, I think they have larger threats on the board, um, given the uh, rather long road of uh, six points and a rather large, uh, la la rather large city at the top, whereas all the features of of green are either shared or in a very, I want to say maybe in a. In, in, a, in a dangerous spots, which uh, are very uncomfortable to really build. And uh, also since the maple uh, count is even, I mean, there are a lot of like small fields, but uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any rush to either player to take those since um, also both road monasteries are out. So there's not going to be a chance where Moby Dick just pulls a road monastery, finishes his road, and just meeples a 12-point field. It's not going to happen. Um, yeah, I think yeah, Green is going to have a rather difficult time to actually potentially catch up with, uh, with like just yeah, like just given the features. Yeah, so and in the meantime, I have to agree with your analysis here. I also uh, prefer red for the reasons uh, that you said. And uh, because these two fields will never get unified, so it seems that the position is likely to stay closed. Many city caps have gone out and uh, we'll probably see a farmer here, a farmer here, a farmer here eventually. Oh, and now Moby Dick manages to finish her city. This will give her a lot of points and meeple back and a commanding commanding lead in this game and Karaher will have a very difficult time whilst we figure out uh, how Karaher can come back and I think at least Karaher should start with a road over here not with a road oh okay nine point field makes sense nine point field is not bad of um and 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 and, and. in the meantime we get news that Hong Kong gets their first point on the match scoreboard as Sonny converted his second game against Fabian as well. And 2-0 uh, is a sweep for the experienced mind sports athlete. Now, in order to come back, Belgium needs to 
Well, I guess win this game, which is quite likely. So in all likelihood, Moby Dick will be ahead of Carragher. Um, the decider, nice, nice dice are against King's Deep. We don't know what's going to happen. And then uh, Gina, Gina and uh, Nico. Well, this could also go either way. Oh, in the meantime, Moby Dick decides to start a field in a different place, which I also rather like. So she just chooses to hold on to her 10 point lead, recognize that Kara will have a tough time finishing these features on the right. And instead of fight, trying to find a way to fight for the nine point field, she just starts a six point field on the left with uh, these city caps. Um, in all likelihood, uh, she'll use them to score quick points. Whilst Carraher will have a tougher time using the city caps because he needs the city cap both to score quick points here and to try actually finish uh, his city at the bottom. Uh, so now, of course, we'll see a uh, Moby Dick in all likelihood scoring four quick points here unless we find something more interesting, but it looks very, very good for the Belgian player. By the way, yeah. in, in the meantime, uh, yeah, of course, Moby Dick scores the quick points. Uh, we, if anybody of you have uh, the question to the silver medalist of the Mind Sports Olympiad, and by the way, the captain of uh, the newly made Finnish team for the World Team Caracas on Online Championships, which we're going to talk about at the end of the stream. Uh, if you have any questions for Otto, then please uh, leave them in... Um, the live stream chat and of course the usual stuff uh, meeple the like button it's important for the algorithm and if you're here and you want more of that kind of content subscribe this also matters a lot and if any of you are feeling especially generous i have enabled the super thanks button which will be very uh much appreciated if um you can afford it so Carraher is now having this tile uh do you score four quick points here on the right if you're Carraher? Or do you have some more interesting ideas? Maybe you want to share this road? Oh, interesting. What do you think about that move, Otto? Um, I gotta say, I I don't really like it. I don't think the uh, blocking of, of Moby Dick's road was a, a priority like in any scenario, especially with this tile, which is at, worth at least four points. Like by just taking the, the four point road, like you said. And um, um, if he w wants to use like more tiles to to block Moby Dick's uh, like connection, like upwards, which wouldn't really make sense in the in the first place, because Carragher was just like only had two points on his part of the of the city. Um, uh, like l this late in the game, even like none of that makes sense to me. <laughs> so uh, I would definitely be interested in what's moving on in Karaha's head. <laughs> well, I, I I can tell you actually, but these these roasts are sometimes uh, you 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 just uh, have no mercy for these players, which I I, I like. No, I don't. I like. Uh, I like yo. That's uh, that's great. It's it's not it's not it's not me saying it. It's Otto saying it. Uh, I'm j I'm just. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking it and keeping it to myself. Uh, but, 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 but I can tell you what's going through their head. I think it's like middle game thinking in the end game. Because in some parts of the game earlier on, it does make sense to try and block your opponent's meeples. Especially if there were a severe threat. Like imagine if, um, I don't know, one of the two monastery tiles were still available. And if Moby Dick is threatening to like... Uh, get the road monastery, finish her road, and like expand the field or something like this. Then maybe then it makes sense for a sure. But at the end of the game, when you're behind, it's like quick points, quick points, quick points, as much as you can get. And you just see Moby Dick. She cares about points rather than meeples. She could have used this tile to get her meeple back from the road, but instead she's saying, "No, I don't care about that meeple. I have three of those." Meeples are dispensable at this stage of this game and the game situation. So instead, she just took four points on the right. Carraher's attacking the field at the top, which makes sense. And then Moby Dick Im immediately just makes the highest point scoring moves. Like, took a six point field and is basically trying to hold on to the advantage on the scoreboard, which is now even bigger. 
as Carraher draws the same tile again. Well, let's see where exactly he puts it. I assume we're going to see some quick points now um, where exactly it's more like a matter of taste. While we wait for that, um, Raf is asking how many players will be in Team Finland for the next big Carcassonne event? I know you were searching additional players to get the, max, to get the minimum required. Um, that is true. We were searching for and we um, we asked and we received help from the um, fr from the kind community. And uh, um, although um, the uh, uh, although we didn't actually uh, end up uh, needing the help um, of the community uh, after all, um, I was able to get my hands on on uh, enough players. But what did happen? Is that because I asked for the, because I asked for the, because I asked for that help, we did get a a huge add to our roster. Um, um, special thanks to uh, to um, uh, Nicolas Victor for that find. Um, it did pay out quite nicely, and um, as of right now, we have the full ten players. Oh, you have 10 players, which is, oh, that's amazing. I thought that uh, that uh, it would be hard to get even the minimum of eight. Uh, well, I just to ask, is uh, the 2022 Finnish champion Rasmus Raurala on the team or not? Um, unfortunately, he is not. I did ask him, but um, he had other plans for the duration of the, um, for the duration of the tournament, so he will not even be in Finland at the time of um, yeah of of the, of the VTCOC. I would have loved to get him on board, but uh, unfortunately, um, when it comes to schedules, um, it's <clears throat> it's the most difficult part of of uh, the Finnish players. It's really hard to find the time for them. Uh, well, and uh, in the meantime, not much has happened actually on the game uh, on the game scoreboard. Uh, it's mostly quick points, players exchanging quick points. Uh, Moby Dick is uh, really just uh, trying to convert this quite uh, clinically, and uh, Karahar managed to equalize the field, managed to score some quick points himself. But the Belgian player has all the fields in different directions, managed to quick uh, get some quick points. Is twenty five points ahead on the scoreboard and um, now we're really just a couple of tiles away from watching her win. Krafteroff is saying that Moby Dick has made a lot of progress recently and it has paid off. For sure, like her elo has gone up and I can see that um, she is not only making good moves but thinking about the game in these long-term ways whereas Carraher seems, although the higher rated player has kind of ma been making these moment-to-moment -moment decisions a little bit more and we can see this difference in thinking has really um, mattered in this game. Um, Moby Dick is getting a straight line. Well, let's see actually how precise is she. She will basically need to figure out whether it is worth blocking this uh, city, whether there's a city cap remaining. I will let her do this technical task. Of course, um, there are plenty of four point roads available here or here that she could take and that could be her uh, highest scoring move uh, or wait are there city caps remaining is there a need of blocking are you are you quick at tile counting Otto? well i don't know if you are but moby dick is uh, <laughs> because uh, she counted that there was the quadruple city tile remaining and so it was safe to take the four points road kara had getting the two extra points for the city without completing the city and the precise point difference we will find out very soon but we know for sure that it is the Belgian player who puts uh, her country on the match scoreboard and it is Hong Kong 1 Belgian 1 and um, a, uh, a bunch of tight duels underway
Yeah, I did um, try to very quickly count the city caps, and I did count that all all of them are um, gone. It does take a few seconds, and it, uh, it is actually one of the um, uh, one one of the main things that I try to get better at is quicker counting and counting uh, like um, like throughout the entire game. Oh yes, well the tile tr tracking versus tile counting, we can talk about that a little bit later, but now we need to congratulate Moby Dick on her almost plus 30 win and Belgium on their first match point and go back to, I think, nice dice, so we have to look at, at that decider, I really don't want to miss that, it's probably some other um, crazy endgame. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the other players. Uh, we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna leave the captain of Team Belgian Nico Velemans until the very end because we know they <laughs> really like taking their time. And look what I told you, oh, it's gonna be so tight. Completely even on the scoreboard, completely even on meeples. Uh, lots of blocked things. Nice dice are playing with the red meeples and Kingsley playing with the green meeples. So now both players exchange the meeple colors. So. I'm gonna use your expertise as my special guest, Otto. Please go ahead. Who is better in this position and why? Okay, let's do a quick thingy thingy. So one point up on on Green's part, we have a southern field which is well at the moment is equal, but there might be a chance for nice dicers to strike and get a maturity on it so that's going to be one thing that is a huge threat a potential threat let's say um, we have another nine point field on the left which is even we have a three point locked city for green a three point city for green at the right bottom so i'm um, yeah given all those factors um yeah um i think uh, nice dicers uh, potential of of grabbing hold of the la of actually both of the fields is going to be way more significant threat than a three point uh, cities of green when um, especially when the meeples are tied. But that is of course um, if there are tiles in the first place for red to actually complete the plans of. Um, of uniting the fields, but um, as a quick look, I definitely like Red's position more. I like Red's position more, especially precisely because there are still tiles to unite the fields. Because like uh, Red can take a Dolito tile, place it over here, which will bring this Red farmer into this nine-point field, so that will already give them a nice advantage. And since the Red has this like. Um, a six point field here as well. I think it may be, yes, it's actually still possible even for Red to bring this farmer into the field. And in order for that to happen, it's a bit of a tall order, but it's not impossible at all. So if Red gets a divider, a city splitter, Red can go over here, score four points for the city, three points for the field, and then there will be still a Dorito tile left that fits over here. So red can sneak into the field like 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 a snake all the way like this which is why kingsley should prevent that and go over here if you ask me unless the player from hong kong has a better idea no but he can he can uh, um, connect to the field directly from like just one side to the left no oh right right but the, uh, but then uh, of course it's possible but then it's like less beautiful and also i just okay. <laughs> I, okay i just need to admit to not seeing that opportunity in the first place because i'm just so drawn to the city cap and the quick points that it can be that it can provide well actually this gives us a problem then because this spot is unblockable if just let's say if kingsley goes over here it, there still be two tiles that left um that fit here so this thing is not going, not not looking good for the play with the green meeples, unless of course green can manage to draw both the Dolito and um, the city um, and the city caps. Uh, hi mod, uh, congrats on your win. We witnessed it, and th uh, hi Nico, congrats on your win. We did not uh, witness it, but we did get news that you won. Uh, two zero and Belgium is now ahead in this match and Kingsley now need to decide where exactly to use this triple city tile 
In the meantime, Vika is asking, are there multi-country WTCOT teams? Is Finland and Sweden as one team theoretically possible? And I can answer this one because there used to be one, uh, there used to be a rule that uh, allowed such teams, and I was on such team in 2021, 2022, 2021, yeah, 2021. Uh, that was team Latvia and Lithuania combined, and that was really in the early days of the WTCOC. Then later, well, after we had a strong result and finished sixth and like got to the quarterfinals, then they decided that having uh, two that having a multi-country teams is too much, even though the, the combined population of Latvia and Lithuania is still less than literally any other WTCOC team. But let's not talk about this, even though I just did. Uh, well, then they disallowed that. And so then later we split it to Team Latvia and Team Lithuania. Uh, and since then, really only single country teams are allowed. But what I do know is that there are some efforts being made on accumulating a on um, gathering a team Sweden as well uh, and there are some experts uh, Swedish players uh, so I am looking forward to um, this a Swedish team existing but back to the game well Kingsley uh, this simply decided to grab a ruin and nice dicer took four points. Kingsley drew this splitter tile, which of course was super, super important for Nice Dicer. Now, in order to connect to the fields, Nice Dicer will need the Dorito and Dorito only players are exchanging quick points and Nice Dicer gets a Dorito. And I think this will be it. Belgium with that move will probably win the match because this field is has one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a uh, seven cities on it, which is worth 25 points, which of course will be more than enough for Tom Smet to take Belgium to a three versus one win in this match. The best that Kingsley can do is probably like grab a four point road over here or a four point road over here and just roll over and accept defeat. And now that I still have a chance, I do. I uh, have to disagree with the move Kingsley made with the divider because given that there were only um, two exactly uh, exactly two tiles which Nice Dasher could use to connect to the 21 point field uh, when Kingsley got the divider uh, just uh, just one move before Nice Dasher had taken four points um, with Triple City with the road and so because Nice Dicer needed that one remaining field triangle, and Kingsley need, desperately needed to score um, like a boatload of points, because Nice Dicer already had a, a six-point field and a well, really a bunch of um, other uh, point-scoring opportunities. I think Kingsley had to go with the divider, um, just right right, right um, left of his one point city at the bottom and try to get the field triangle himself connecting him co connecting him to the uh, 21 point field uh, yeah because I, I don't think mm -hmm. because I, I don't think even if Kingsley had um, completed the um, um, the city at the bottom with the final remaining triangle I don't think it might it, I don't think it would have been enough maybe. Oh. Oh, yeah, so I'm just drawing the move that you told about on the screen. So this is very instructive that if you know that the only way you you can win as green is like to draw the tile that your opponent needs, it's it's good to set up also a good use for the same tile that your opponent needs. So that in addition to your opponent not getting it, you also benefit from getting it yourself. And I think that would have been like a very nice technical move. Maybe Kingsley was uh, get, getting afraid of getting blocked, which is why actually I rather like Kingsley move over here because it doesn't really make a difference because actually finishing this 10 point city would have been enough for Kingsley. Uh, we can see that other than the fields, Kingsley was actually ahead on the scoreboard. Um, the field is 20, what, 21 points. Okay, these two castles were already on the field. So like the field was worth 15 points and Kingsley would have scored a few more by finishing this. So like Kingsley would have won plus, plus five, plus six, something like this. So it would have been maybe less technical uh, ways to win. But in terms of uh, the win probability, I do think the move that Kingsley played and the move that you were suggesting um, were equivalent in their win probability. 
not taking away that, of course, this was a very aesthetic way to try and flip for the game. So we congratulate uh, Nice Dicer and Team Belgium for winning this match. And to witness a formality, we need to have a look at CTCTCT versus Gina Gina. I think there was only like one... Uh, tile remaining in that game as we saw and it looks like the hong kong player is headed to a win but hopefully 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 uh okay i just can't type so many cts people should have shorter <laughs> screen names uh okay it, it does look like they finished the game and they indeed won with a plus 20 advantage so the most uh interesting game between um ct and uh, gina gina wait where did my... Huh. Interesting. Where did my drawing tool go? This is very, very interesting. Uh, anyway, I just lost the ability to draw on the screen somehow. But not that I'm going to need this. You can see that in the first game there was a one point difference. So that was a bit more interesting. The second game seemed that it was uh, one-sided right from the start. So we did pick the right end game to watch. It was the coin flip for the entire match. And uh, nice dicer was excellent at drawing the final Dorito. Uh, hi, Nicholas. Uh, um, and drawing the win for his team. So I'm going to just update the score over here. Nico won against Eugene Tse, 98. And CT won 2-0 against Gina Gina. So very, very symmetrical result. Very quick match. Lots of 2-0 matches and uh, lots of 2-0 results. And the one game uh the one duel which he was headed to the third uh match of to the third game uh, ended up deciding the whole match Girap is asking hi uh, uh hi alexi are you planning to do a carcass on fantasy league again for the wtcot yes i am and for those of you who were not um viewing my channel last year which i do believe is a substantial chunk of you so and uh, welcome and um, I will be streaming the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship and I will be doing a giveaway again like a fantasy Carcassonne thing where you get to select a fantasy team of um, five um, players and then if they do well in the World Champ in the World Cup then you get points for this and then you get a prize and if they don't uh, do well then you get negative points and then you don't get a prize so I'm planning something like this I'm not sure exactly if it's going to be a fantasy league with the exact same rules it did seem to me that that was probably um, it seems to me that this is where I got the most engagement compare in compared to all my other giveaways but there are other giveaways happening so do stay tuned. I haven't forgotten about that thousand subscriber celebration. It is still happening. There's just some practicalities that are needed to be sorted about th that. But uh, yes, the short answer is yes, there will be a Carcassonne Fantasy League. Hi, Divaka. Hi, Ribachuk. Thanks for me playing a like button and reminding others to do that. It makes a great deal for the algorithm. <laughs> Okay, I get another uh, roast from my viewers in the chats, as I do very often. So, uh, before we leave, I wanted to talk uh, to Otto a little bit, because in 45 minutes, I will be streaming again, this time without Otto, because Otto will have other important duties, and that important uh, duties involve playing and being a captain of Team Finland in the friendly match against Team Croatia. So we have um, um, the, a match between two countries which will participate in the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship. Um, so then I'll give you the floor, Otto. What are you, are you looking forward to the match that you're going to play in 15 minutes? Um, do you think how are good your how good your chances are against Croatia and how do you assess the chances of Team Finland in the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship? What are you looking to uh, get out of this? Basically, just tell us something. 
Okay, so let's start with the like the the overall quality of our players. I'm uh, first and foremost, I want to say that um, this team was not made uh, with the intention to uh, or, or with the belief that uh, we would absolutely win this tournament. Uh, this team is made um, because I want Finland to become part of the VTCOC um, in the future as well. And I want to increase the popularity of Carcassonne um, in Finland. And I think that um, participating um, or just ma making the debut in, in, the, in VTCOC is a, a splendid way for myself to encourage and to find more uh, Finnish players who want to uh, improve um, in the competitive Carcassonne and who want to be able to um, show uh, their skill set um, in, uh, in playing the, the base version and also just to have you know a bit of like fun in general not just to play like those um uh, just casual uh, games which um which they play every day i think um, this opportunity is going to be um is going to be and it's going to provide a a um, a nice experience for themselves um also because we do have uh, uh, i think uh four um, um, national champions um, in our team. Um, the thing is that uh, one, of course, is me uh, from 2023. Um, then we have um, the uh, champions from uh, 2013 and 16, um, uh, 2015, and then 2017 and 2021, because two of those have won the national title two, uh, two times. Um, but the reason um, why why they haven't been like really visible uh, in, um, in in the like let's say the community's eyes is because um, they don't take uh, Carcassonne like that uh, seriously, especially uh, regarding the competitive side, and so uh, they have been kind of uh, like I want to say like kind of like slowly maybe straying away a little bit from Carcassonne. Uh, and I want to like, you know, give them a, a, a bit of a push to, you know, back to the to the great stuff. Hmm. So I'm going, I want, I want to follow up on that, on sort of this push. I absolutely love the mindset that you told about. Like, it's not about just winning, but playing the long game and developing the community. But Team Finland will have access will have an advantage over other teams that many teams don't have is an access to an uh, ex exclusive uh, coach. Of course, uh, not only exclusive because you also make uh, YouTube videos and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Of course, yes, you should uh, also uh, watch Nalaheim's channel. Um, uh, who and uh, of course Otto is also streaming as many of you may know uh, many friendly matches I presume many World Team Caucus on, on, online matches uh, later on and making analysis videos but in addition to have access to those materials uh, your teammates will have access to you personally and it can be a really really um, big advantage which many, which many teams just don't realize so do you have team training? Are the players whom you selected interesting in training and bettering themselves? Or are you mostly being like true Finns and just keeping uh, away from each other and not talking to each other and then just meet to play games and then that's it? Like, is there something in the team going on um, away from the game tables? It is certainly a uh, sort of a double-edged uh, plate um, in this instance, since um, some of those players are very keen on actually improving and are um, taking advantage of the help that I almost like on a on daily basis um, um, am offering to them because I have the time and I want to definitely um, uh, help 
um, all of the players who want to uh, like evolve um, to the let's, let's say to the to the next uh, to the next stage. Um, yeah, I do help them. Uh, we have had um, some uh, like face-to-face -face sessions. Um, also, when um, when it has been possible, uh, since um, not all of our players, of course, are from the same city, so it's uh, it would be basically like impossible to uh, to arrange a face-to-face -face, um, meetings with all of them. But um, also, we have had a um, um, a like online practice sessions with some of them, and uh, uh, they have certainly taken the um, feedback I've given um, with um, like um, uh, yeah they, they, let's let's say that they they have valued the feedback that I have given. And um, some of those um, have said that they are definitely interested in um, in in uh, like um, uh, private coaching, um, but they have uh, so far not um, not um, like been able to arrange the time to uh, for me to make that happen. And some of those um, then are. Um, players who, yeah, well, well, like you said very well, uh, in a in a traditional Finnish way, want to like kind of keep to themselves and just have um, fun for this season. It's now now that the um, offer has been given. <laughs> uh, well, if anything, to all your competition and of course many of my viewers also going to participate in the championship themselves it sounds like a bit of a relief because the prospect of facing like five players who are trained by trained by auto like to play five nallerheims it is a uh, daunting uh, <laughs> a prospect for uh, many teams i'm sure that this sentiment is shared by many uh well anyway thank you so much for uh sharing your insight today and it's definitely not the last time you will be seeing auto on uh, my channel more especially during to the world team caucus and online ch championship but you will also be sitting seeing auto on uh his own channel uh you can go to nalaheim that's with a double l uh and um then subscribe to him watch his recent analysis videos and streams of friendly matches where was i going with this no i think that was it actually uh if we have any other questions to auto they may have like 15 seconds left to frantically type them in the chat <laughs> but then that is going to be it okay so auto uh thanks for streaming with me Good luck, uh, good luck Otto is saying Zvonimir Vlaic, but this is the captain of the opposing team, so he doesn't really mean that. <laughs> I, I, I take that with a, with a bit of salt. Yes, yes, yes. In, in, see, a, in, a, in a very good way. You see, there, there, there's a wink emoji at the end, so it's absolutely clear <laughs> what it means. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, good luck in the match against Croatia. We will be following, and um, everybody else... In 35 minutes, we're meeting here again. I mean, go nowhere or do go somewhere. Go stretch your legs. It's actually important to go outside once in a while, which is what I'm going to do uh, between the two streams. Uh, you know, grab a bite and something and we will see. Well, you'll, you're, gonna, you're not going to see us. You're going to see me, but you're also going to see Otto on the tables. We're probably going to be watching one of your games. So maybe, I don't know, that adds some <laughs> so, some, some pressure or something anyway good luck in the upcoming match thank y'all for watching and I'm gonna see you soon